You're listening to Tremendous Leadership with Dr. Tracy Jones. Hi, everyone. Our guest today is Dan Goodwin. Dan brings 30 years of investigative sales and negotiation experience in his consulting and coaching business. He teaches people and clients to think like an investigator as they move forward in in their businesses and their careers. And you are going to love hearing what Dan has to say about what it takes to pay the price of leadership. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Tracy Jones. Welcome to the Tremendous Leadership Podcast, Leaders on Leadership, where we pull back the curtain on leadership and talk with leaders around the world on what it took them to pay the price of leadership. And today, I am very excited because my guest is Dan Goodwin. I want to tell you a little bit about Dan. Dan Goodwin leads entrepreneurs as they grow their businesses from startup to stability and preparing for scale-up and funding opportunities. Dan uses his corporate background and real estate experience to help business owners adopt best practices. He enjoys working with organizations to develop the skill sets necessary to compete and crush results in today's economy. This is going to be a good one. After his corporate career, Dan completed projects related to business planning, strategy sessions, investigations, and security issues. Dan has used his unique ability to ask probing questions to help clients self-discover what they truly want. Based on those revelations, Dan is able to give directions and help clients create business plans. I love it. So Dan speaks to various business groups on such topics as think like an investigator, cover your assets, networking, business planning, success strategies, critical thinking, and intuitive decision-making, the entrepreneurial mindset, and the 25 things I wish I had known when I was 25. Dan, thank you so much for being our guest. Yeah, thank you so much, Tracy. Man, that guy sounds like an awesome guy. I gotta meet him. Wow. So no, I tell you what, I'm like, okay, God, I need to, I've got to cut that bio down. Just a little bit. <laughs> Listen, things. for our guests, for our guests. Okay. So Dan and I, Dan and I connected um, through the C-suite network. I always like to provide people the context that um, I have vetted Dan. He is tremendous and he knew my father. He's a big book reader. So this is going to be fun. But one of the reasons was Dan sent me just a really sweet, humble bio. But when I, I got I reached out to him on LinkedIn just to say, Hey, you know, we're going to do our recording today and I really looked at what he was done doing and those of you that listen to this podcast know how I feel about investigation critical thinking skills digging down so I'm sorry Dan I had to throw that in there because um, this is going to be very exciting very cognitively stimulating conversation and I can't wait Good. Well, I appreciate that, Tracy. Yeah. And I, it's, you know, 30 years of uh, experience and 18, almost 19 of that uh, in the corporate world before I transitioned to be an entrepreneur. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to add whatever I can to your tribe and your followers and have my people just uh, pile in when they can and take what they can from this and move forward. Oh, thanks, Dave. And I love that you're a hybrid. Like so many people out there are listeners. A lot of us started out in the bureaucratic world, the corporate world, whatever you want to call it. And then we transitioned out. Um, or And so that's a lot of our listeners here. So I love that you have walked in both worlds because they're very, they're diff- different skill sets and that you are, are claiming your authentic self in the entrepreneurial world right now. So my father wrote this speech called The Price of Leadership, and he was a real pragmatist. Um, and he uh, believed that leadership is a privilege and a joy, but it's also really tough. And you're going to get your nose and your knuckles bloody because, you know, it's tough. And there are some things that you have to be doing at a price you have to pay in order to be truly considered a leader. And I'd love to unpack your perspective on each of those today, Dan, as far as what that meant in your leadership journey, because you've been in a lot of different roles. So are you ready? I'm uh, the bring it on. I'm ready. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, the first price that my father talks about is loneliness. And we've all heard that it's lonely at the top. Um, but loneliness has a different take for a lot of different people. So could you unpack what loneliness when maybe you've experienced it in, in your career and, and maybe some words for some of our listeners that may be in a season of loneliness? Sure. So, so as I was, and, and thank you so much for, for bringing the book back into focus. I, I'm a, I'm an avid reader, as you said, and I did reread 
uh, your your dad's book and just thoroughly enjoyed it. It's it's been a few years, uh, but I do remember that uh, that speech <laughs> that that talk that he gave and and I remember reading the book. So loneliness uh, to me, as I was uh, keeping that in mind as I was reading it, to me meant to be resolute, to have resolve. And part of that comes from my own experience. The resolve part is when I left uh, uh, Sprint Corporation after almost 19 years, I left in 2007, there were things when I got home that next Monday and I woke up and looked at myself in the mirror and said, what did I just do? <laughs> what, what, what did I volunteer? So I volunteered to be paroled, right? I mean, I, I wasn't, I wasn't pushed out by any, I, I didn't volunteer because I was restless. I'd got my okay. MBA okay. and I, I thought, you know, entrepreneurship was where to go, but the loneliness piece hit pretty quick. This, this was in March of 07 yes. and the loneliness piece hit pretty quick. And it's like, um, Wow. Did I make the right decision? Uh, we identify with our profession sometimes. And especially, I think, especially for the males, uh, for, for the guys, I, I think our ego, our identity is wrapped up in our profession or what we do. Mm-hmm. I was very good at what I did. I got paid very good money to go out and, and do internal investigations on behalf of the corporation. So the loneliness piece hit me pretty quick. And I had, I had uh, the thing I had to do was to uh, concentrate on this daily task, moving me toward the next piece of results. I love that. Very concrete stuff. So, and that is a good step for those of, uh, listeners out there that are thinking about coming out and doing their own thing. Um, when you have that camaraderie or, you know, the corporate identity, when you leave that, that is kind of jarring. You know, like you, I left uh, in 2009, uh, huge organizations and came back to run a little tiny family run publishing company. And it's like, you know, where are the processes? Where are the people? Where are the resources? And and it's really very different. But I love that you talk about the, the application is get out of loneliness by concentrating on the task. You left for a reason. Now you gotta now you gotta bring it to fruition. Right. And, and the other the other piece of that is uh, as I look back on it, and this is this is what I coach. On, I call these people encore career people getting the golden parachute or making the choose the choice to retire, to do something else, especially in the entrepreneur space. Um, I wish I would have taken more time to educate and research for myself. Okay. And when, when somebody, when somebody calls me and said, I have this business idea, they, they want to know what they should be preparing for. And so if they, if, if they listen, If they've never managed a department, if they've never had to make their department a profit center or treat it as a profit center, if they're a line person, if they're a widget maker, if they're uh, an accountant, if they've only had a single focus for their career, they are surprised and sometimes shocked at when I say we need to form the 10 sections of your business plan. And then to see all the moving parts of a robust business plan is uh, it's a real eye opener. And I thought I was ready. I, you know, I, I just finished my MBA in 2004. I mm-hmm. thought I knew it all, right? Well, theory versus practice, right? <laughs> so, so that's, that is a passion of mine is when people are thinking about startup is to help them vet their idea. They may be the greatest widget maker in the world. However, if there's no demand for their widget, They are, you know, hopefully the money they spend with me to help them prepare will be a tenth of what they would have thrown out there to see if their idea got, you know, stuck the mud on the wall, so to speak. And did you say you called them Encore Career? Is that what? Yeah, Encore Careers. I love that. I've never heard that. That's, yeah. And I deal with a lot of people in my space like that, midlife realizing or, uh, you know, uh, 70s even saying, okay, now now what's next? But I love that. So you, when you work with them, you really walk them through the process as far as um, vetting their ideas. And have you read Michael Gerber's The E-Myth Revisited? Absolutely. I, I quote Michael all the yeah. time. You're working and I, you know, I talk about strategy, working on your business versus in your business. 
And, you know, when you're, when you're a solopreneur, especially, you're wearing all the hats, right, Tracy? The CFO, the CMO, the CTO, the CEO, the COO. And uh, when that, that's overwhelming to some yes. people. Yes. And, and uh, Gino Wickman, you know, talks about the two types of people, visionaries and integrators. Knowing there are three times as many visionaries than integrators because, like me, like you probably – we get bored easily. <laughs> We're right. looking for the next project. We're right. looking for the next opportunity. I want to make something, find somebody, go hire talent to go make this, to carry this out, execute this, so I can go on and decide what I want to be when I grow up tomorrow, right? That, that's kind of how I feel. So what would you recommend? And for our listeners out there, we're going to have Dan's information at the end because you're probably thinking, oh, man, if they're in that space right now where they're they're overwhelmed. And I know a lot of our leaders are, especially our entrepreneurial leaders. um, What would you recommend for them right now? Well, number one, breathe, <laughs> take a breath. Man, and then, uh, it, it is so it is so uh, there, there's a lot of stresses that come in right on us as we consider businesses, uh, breathe. And then I would say, find a construct, find a system to help you dissect the pieces, the 10 sections of the business plan. It will not be done overnight. Right. Just like, so Michael used uh, somebody that baked awesome pies in his right. in the original e-myth, right? Just because somebody tells you you make awesome pies doesn't make you a business owner. And that just means you make great pies. So we have to put flesh on the bones. We have to flesh this out. And the startup piece, the the chances for success are 10, 20, 50 times greater if you will put the work in before you even open a door. I love it. I love it. And a lot of times you're doing that as a singular individual because you started out and then we'll talk about that. So going into weariness, okay. How do you stay um, refreshed, replenished? How do you combat this? Cause it, it's a lot of work. There's, um, there's stresses on people at the top. You know, somebody said to me the other day in an organization, I get this whole shared leadership, collective servant leadership, but let's face it. Not everybody in the entity is equal. Everybody's a human being, but certain people get paid more because they, they're, they're, they're responsible for more stuff. So how do you combat weariness? Dan, or can you do a season where you were really tired or worn out? Yeah, the last last six months. <laughs> that's, that's so, so easy answer there. Okay, no, well, I should you know, see that coming. <laughs> well, yeah, well, but here, here's the fact of the matter is, for the last four to five years, I have uh, been working behind this screen, this Zoom. I've been using Zoom for five years. I've trained and coached thousands of people all over the world. So, the the, the difference is when it's your choice to do that fit without figuring that somebody's telling you have to do that because we as human beings, we're resistant to, we want to buy in, right? And, and we've got people saying, no, you have to do it this way. Here's what I think about technology. And then I'll, I'll get right back to the weirdness. To, to what's happened the last six months with uh, COVID and everything that we've been dealing with is it has forced our workplace three to five years in the future about how the workplace would work and how it would look like because technology folks is moving on and you better get on the train or you're going to get left behind at the station wondering where the train's at. So embrace it. Uh, I'm always been an early adopter on the bleeding edge of early adoption. So I always want to keep that moving. Now back to your question. I went down that rabbit trail. (laughs) The the weariness piece of it is uh, pace yourself. So not only breathe, not only take a breath and be and, and practice gratitude, but pace yourself. Realize realize that a life perfectly in balance means you're not moving. If you stand up and stand straight and you're perfect in balance, that means you're not moving. You're standing still. So 
the, the technique is to manage your imbalance. There are going to be days that you're working 10, 12 hour days and the, the family is not, is going to be on the short end, but there, but you also to keep balance, you need to also plan days for the family is the priority. Your significant other is the priority. So I schedule my meetings pretty much on the hour in the afternoon uh, and there's always about a 10 or 15 minute buffer between I've got, I've timed it. I've got a 10 minute walk from my house to the top of the hill where the church is and back that gets the blood flowing, gets me out of the seat and, and uh, prevents muscle cramps and aches. So the, the, the weariness person, the weariness part is pace yourself and remember that the, the old saying is Rome wasn't built in a day. Right. Your business does not be built in one day, Tracy. Right. I love that. Well, I was on doing our, a Zoom course last night and, and talking about, you know, what is your purpose? What is your vision? We're going to get to that. But one of the young men said that, um, but if you dial in your clarity and your vision, what do you have to sacrifice? And so it, it kind of was, he was going back to your points of, I love about, you're going to have to shift priorities. That's okay. There are going to be days when you are going to work a 20 hour day. And then there are going to be times where you have to focus on the family. So, I mean, that's, that's really great wisdom. Cause I think going into it, nobody wants, something to drop and you sure don't want your health friends family or faith to drop that's that can't happen but you're going to have to get creative in how you balance it all out yeah absolutely and i love to get out and walk and just even cheese even a little bit was the one guy said all his great ideas come to him in the shower just getting up moving around you know doing that kind of thing excellent okay absolutely so loneliness weariness the next thing my dad talked about was abandonment. And he would always tell me, Tracy, I do more in a day to contribute to my failure than I do my success. And I think he was really getting onto the topic of focus. And if we're really honest with ourselves at the end of the day, if we give ourselves a billable hour thing, there's a lot of time in there that maybe we were dwaddling or doing stuff that really wasn't of the utmost priority. So can you, can you really help me understand what abandonment, abandonment needs for you and how you kind of hone your focus? Yeah. Well, it's funny you use the word focus because when I was preparing for this podcast, I wrote a keyword next to each section and focus was the word I wrote down for abandonment. So all I can say is great minds think alike, right? Okay. So. Tremendous minds think alike. <laughs> Excuse me. Tremendous minds think alike. Got to get the branding in there, baby. Love it. <laughs> so, uh, so focus is uh, is where it's at as far as mm-hmm. as drill down, uh, protect time type focus. I do my best creativity activities in the morning time. Okay. Uh, what I derive energy from is interaction. I have set, uh, you can call it, uh, you can call it planning, you can call it lead generation, you can call it a number of things. It is where you are focused in going back to Gerber. You're working on your business. That is where your focus comes in. In the real estate business, uh, we would call that, we would say there is no emergency that is allowed to happen before 10 a.m. Now, if you have a closing or a transaction that's closing, yeah, there may be. The whole point is there is nothing you need to worry about. Uh, it, it, the, the thing to do is you make your client calls between 8.30 and 10, and then you take care of any issues after 10 o'clock. Wow. Protect the golden slash platinum hour or hour and a half, depending on how you work. And, and the rest of the stuff you can address later in the day when everyone else has finally had their coffee and they're awake also. That's it. So would you consider that the client calls, you know, f- start the day with the revenue generating activities and then go to more of the operational tasks throughout the rest of the day? Is that kind of what you're saying? That, that has worked for me. Now I there are okay. people. Yeah. There, there are people Tracy though, that their, their body schedule is flipped. And I get it. The The point is, it's not when you do it. It is that you do it, right? Yeah. It is, it is yeah. that you have that time. Like, so will you see sweet as an example? I, I had to limit my quote unquote, get to know you calls from one to three Monday through Friday. If I didn't put limits on that 
at the rate that our network is growing, I would be doing these all day, every day. And that is not an income producing activity. It is, it's great. I love, I love the interaction. I love learning about other people and how they impact their world. It's not impact, but it's not income producing until, uh, you know, you do something to collaborate or joint venture or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. And, and and I appreciate that. And that, but the, the point is you're saying you just have to have chunks of time where you focus on one thing and not the other. And I think too many of us, um, you, like you said, the alarm goes off and we take it as an alarm and we just start running blindly into the day. And at the end of the day, we really didn't get anything done that we needed to get done. Mm. I've had that right. happen a few times. Exactly. That's exactly, what, that's exactly what I'm saying. So back to the focus, bringing it back to uh, the focus piece, the abandonment piece is it does get, and I'm not sure if Zig said this or your dad said this or who said this, but lonely at the top. I think that was Zig. It's lonely at the top. And when you are your solopreneur and you are wearing all the hats, it does get lonely. And to, to me, the abandonment piece is uh, you, as soon as you recognize that, then you use that as a reason to go find your tribe, mm -hmm. to go find people that can help you uh, that are, are, are giving freely. Does that mean you may have to invest some money in a, in a coach uh, or, or a consultant? Yes, you may have to. I promise you the investment you make will 10x, 20x at least and reduce the, the scope of time for you to get to an answer and into production with whatever your question is. Well, I would really echo what you said, because you know, my dad always said that you're gonna be the same person five years from now that you are today, except for two things, the people you meet and the books you read. And I'm so glad you brought that up, Dan. There's, there's advocates, people that freely give, C-suite's a big, a big part of that. Um, but then there's resources, the more the transactional relationships. And no matter how many blogs or things you read, um, we can only unpack ourselves. And like, I'm working with um, uh, a lady now to help me with my marketing and my branding because some, we can't see it in ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And she even admits she has to have somebody, even though she does it for everybody else. So for the listeners out there, I really appreciate that you hit on that, Dan. Um, when you get to that point where you realize, hey, I'm, I'm just not able to figure out, there's tons of resources out there and you need to make an investment in that too. For the entrepreneurs, a lot of people say, well, I don't have money to invest and it's kind of like a vicious cycle, but you got it. But you're not going to be creating revenue unless you help have somebody help you get to the revenue generating idea and and systems. Right, and and I find that you know the, to use the disc personality, I find the SCs. I I, I may I'm I'm not admitting to this. I may have married a wife who is a perfectionist. I'm not going to because she may listen to this, and I wouldn't want to label her. Right, I'm kidding. So, but. Uh, um, it is it is the personality type that wants to know every piece of information before you launch. And I'm exactly the opposite. I'm just going to go and bump into walls and skin my shin and and keep going. And there there is a balance there. Yes. And sometimes we, we run past the barrier and then we have to go back and clean up the mess. Right. I mean, that's that's what. It's messy. Life's messy. Business is messy. Uh, sometimes you don't connect or engage with the right people. Uh, that th then you really feel abandoned. Uh, I've had I had a business partner years ago. Excuse me. I had an ex business partner years ago. <laughs> so we I found out uh, through a series of events that uh, we didn't have a shared value on how we treated people, and uh, my wife warned me went right through that barrier right uh i had a i had i had a co-worker come to me and say are you sure you want to uh team up with this person and i ran through that barrier uh luckily i was able to manage the extraction process but i did i did feel abandoned but it was self-imposed oh, <laughs> that's always the worst guy. I know. Dan, thanks for bringing that up because I, I deal with that too. You know, that's one of the big fears, fear of abandonment. But I mean, I teach people too. There are things where I was got um, 
involved with people that I, I didn't have, I, I knew there was the value congruence was slightly off or the trust wasn't wholly there, but yet, oh, it, you know, somehow poof, it's going to appear. And so those are the hardest abandonments is when you know you never should have been <laughs> yoked with that person in the first place. So thank you for being authentic and sharing that. Yeah, it was, it's tough. And it, uh, it still has fallout to this day. Uh, you know, uh, when I, I still have some cringeworthy moments and luckily I feel my personal brand was, was salvaged. Uh, and I, I, you know, I moved forward with other ventures, uh, with people that know about that, but I think they came to realize it was not me it was not Dan, the man, it was the other person that was uh, driving the train. I, I wasn't the, I wasn't, I wasn't the, the key, the founder, the leader on that. I was, I was in that executioner role. Well, thank you for that too. So abandonment also means literally you're probably going to have to abandon either a customer, um, a client, a business partner that when you say, Hey, this is as far as it's going to go. We cannot continue to grow together. It's time to cut your losses and call it. Yep. I agree. Totally agree. And, and the sooner the better. And sometimes business divorces can be messier than personal divorces. So, you know, make sure you paper it up on the front end. And we haven't even talked about investigative issues. We'll get there. I promise. Oh, I can't wait. But wait. make sure you paper it up. <laughs> paper it up on the front end to save yourself grief, uh, time and money on the back end. Very wise counsel. Very wise counsel, Dan. Okay. So now let's talk about before we get into all that investigation stuff, let's talk about vision. All right. When there's no vision, people perish. What does vision mean to you? And how, what are your um, vision amplifiers? Ooh, I like that. Vision amplifiers. Um, vision to me is encouraging people to live into their strengths, their goals, their projects. That, that's what vision means to me. So my vision for my business or streams of income, I have multiple businesses, my streams of income uh, is me. It's personal to me and or my wife, right? I mean, we're, we're a team. Mm -hmm. uh, now, she doesn't like anything to do with what we're doing right now, but we have other projects we work on together. So. Okay. Yeah, so, but it is to cast, um, cast a vision. I've, I've always been a dreamer. I've always been someone that can paint the picture, uh, you know, you call that communication, gift of gab. Um, my family calls it something else, two letters starts with a B and it's so anyway, uh, but, but it is the ability to communicate and help others see and define and clarify hmm. and help them believe in themselves to reach their goals and their goals don't have to be my goals. Right. Right. Excellent. And how do you do that? I mean, how do you, how do you get smarter in the business? I know you're a big reader. Do you study research on it? Are you writing it down or, or what's going on? How do you keep, how do you keep honing your craft? I hone my craft through reading. I mean, I've got a whole stack of whole stack of books here. And one of the things, one of the things I try to do, and I would encourage your listeners to do also, this is just a practice that I've adopted uh, especially with our C-suite, uh, you know, compadres, right? Mm -hmm. Is if you, uh, if, if somebody has given you 30 or 45 or 60 minutes and they've written a book, buy their book. Kindle, uh, buy a hard, hard copy that actually makes some money on it. Honor that time. It, so, it, so I don't care if it's 5, 10, 15, 20, $25. Right honor your time and, and make it happen for them, give them. And I always, you know, I, I'll read the book. I'll give it a review on Amazon. That's how I honor that piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, so how do I stay sharp? It's reading. How do I discover vision? That goes back to my skill sets and what I was trained to and learned in my corporate life that I have brought over to my entrepreneurial life. Excellent. And thank you for sharing that about the book too and, and the Amazon thing. That's one of the things for our listeners uh, C-Suite really focuses on is reciprocity. If somebody gives you the gift of their time, 
um, thank them and honor them in some way. And you know what? If they're telling you something and they wrote a book, then they're really a credible uh, person in it. So definitely, definitely go ahead and read it. So, and thank you for sharing what, what, your, uh, what your vision is and uh, helping other people um, kind of unpack that. So can we talk about that? I, I'm fascinated to hear a little bit more about your process, about how you help people unpack, you know, drill. I'm an engineer by trade. So I'm like root cause analysis. Don't just go chasing after solutions. What's what's the problem? How do you help people really unpack that? So the first, yeah, the first thing I'll say is my investigative background prepared me for entrepreneurship because it taught me how to ask thought provoking pattern interrupt questions. And so, for example, um, I just I just put in the can. I just finished production on uh, a course called Don't Get Effed Again. So it's Don't Get Fooled Again, uh, just in case, you know, you heard it differently, <laughs> right? So, but it is it is for people who have experienced, uh, they are experiencing a betrayal, uh, some sort of a, 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 a trial, some sort of a catastrophe in their business. So mm-hmm. that could be fraud, theft, embezzlement. It could be an inappropriate relationship. It could be stolen IP whatever the human issues are and the are either experiencing that they're going through it right now. They're reaching out to me. They just, they just came through it and they're trying to, you know, make, make adjustments to systems, processes, and people, or they just want to prevent it from ever happening. So the whole thing that has helped me is you're an engineer. I have a system. I have a way of processing information that helps me drive deep and drive it pretty quickly uh, based upon the fact how deep in rapport I am with people because people still have to know, like, and trust you. So my background in training, I'll give you the two minute version, Tracy, if that's okay. Sure. My background in training was a was internal investigations for for Sprint. So I was sent to the same interrogation and interview school that the feds and the states and the counties and the locals were sent to. So I learned the process and psychology behind how to conduct investigative interviews. We never called them interrogations, by the way, in the corporate world. That was a little harsh. (laughs) But that that was a way for me – and, I, you know, I get along with 95% of the people I meet. I, I feel like I'm a nice guy. I feel like people find it easy to talk to me. So it's easy to get into that rapport. And that's, that's how you start. Uh, that, that's how I, I started creating my construct for this. Excellent. Excellent. And so anything else, Dan, as we cycle back on leadership, and then I want to connect the listeners with you um, that we haven't covered that you would like to share with our leaders that are listening out there? The Yeah. So one of the leadership lesson, I believe, is to practice gratitude. And I know I mentioned that kind of at the, at the top of the hour, um, but to be thankful for what you have been given, mm. the skills and talents that you have been given to practice gratitude. W- listen, there will always be things that uh, come against us every day. That what you mentioned a while ago, critical thinking skills needs to be taught in school. Intuitive decision making needs to be taught in school. Mm. Financial education needs to be taught in school. Now, I don't do the financial education piece, but I do use the critical thinking and intuitive decision making. That's based on, you know, thousands of employee interviews. Mm -hmm. And it is the self-talk piece of what you feed your mind. What you feed your mind is what you're going to reflect. That's why it's important that we go back to the reading piece. Uh, We go back to surround yourself with great people piece we dive deep and explore values for potential joint venture partners, even vendors, uh, clients. There are some clients uh, that, you know, will take the, the 80, 20 rule will apply. So that that's, that's kind of my philosophy 
on the leadership piece. And that's what I walk through when I am coaching or consulting with somebody that's going through a huge situation at, in their workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't, by the way, I don't do marriages. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I don't There's, do I'm hey, not a marriage counselor. Stay in your lane. Okay. Stay in your lane. You, you, you've got a great lane. Well, and you know what? I, well, when you, I bet when you help that person um, de-stress their own uh, professional burdens, I'm sure that has positive ramifications in the marriage. Uh, yes, because, because what we're taught, what we're talking about are principles. Right. And, and they can apply personal development, professional development. And obviously it's easier for somebody to invest and think they're, inv they're investing in professional development. Uh, but it, the, the whole point is hopefully they'll listen to you. They'll implement uh, an action plan. And yes, that should be reflected uh, with their personal stress level too. Yes, absolutely. Well, Dan, where can people get in touch with you, even if they were interested in working out with you? And you mentioned that um, don't get effed again. Did you say that's a course or a book coming out and up? It's it's right now. It's a it's a course. It's, okay. Uh, it's twelve videos. It's an hour long, and it's uh, I, I'm I'm going to put it out the the link on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the place I live and breathe. So LinkedIn is the in is the, so if you look for Dan Goodwin hyphen CYA consulting, by the way, CYA consulting, CYA stands for cover your assets. I know maybe in, in, in other parts of the world, you've heard it differently, but it's cover your assets. And yes, it's a tongue in cheek. And yes, I'm a little naughty. And I, you know, <laughs> yes, I, I have a whole nother talk called CYA WTF and other TLAs. And people say, well, what's a TLA? That's TLA stands for a three letter acronym. And I in the telecom that. business, in the military, we've got, you know, all these, TLA, all these TLAs, but CYA is cover your assets. WTF is, wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> so when you have a WTF moment, it is a reframe, right? I mean, we're reframing. I love what it. Just, we have to reframe in order to move forward. You're allowed to be upset for 15 minutes and right. then you have to seek a solution. Right. You right. have to right. seek a solution. Rant and rave and then... Yeah, fifteen minute rule, baby. Yeah, that's fifteen what you minutes, that's what and then got. no more. As my dad would say, no more thumb sucking. Time to seek a solution. <laughs> exactly. Oh, exactly. He would, yeah. So. I mean, yeah. And then my dad, my dad would say to people, "Of course you've got problems. You're not dead. I mean, get on with it. Let's let's find something else that we can cry about. Let's move." On. <laughs> this is what we get paid for, right? This I is know. what we get paid for. We to solve problems. That's why people pay me to help them work through the structure and the process. I love so it. So anyway, all right, now it. you just got me preaching. Now you just got me preaching. I so. love preach on brother. And I love the acronyms uh, as a military girl. I mean, I have, I have, I know every acronym in the world. I've even invented some of my own and I love acronyms. <laughs> I, I've got, I've got 20 that I can, so I can, you know, that, that talk, I can expand that from uh, 10 minutes to an hour. We can go over 20 acronym, the mnemonics, you know, and yes, I've made some of mine up. I, but the, I have four letter acronyms too. So, uh, so a DTFW stands for do the fantastic work. You may have heard it differently, but do the fantastic work and you've got to do the work. You can't just sit around and wait for the sky to fall and say, Oh, here, God's blessed blessing me because I made a plan. No, God blesses you when you take action on your right, plan. Right. That's what happens. Well, it's like you were talking anyway, about being perfectly right. balanced. I mean, unless you're in motion, um, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to get anywhere kind of thing. So, Oh, I love it, Dan. All right. Well, well, Dan, thank you so much. Um, it has been a great time of enlightenment. Sorry. I was writing. I know this is all recorded, but I'm one of those learners that when I hear it, I have to write it down because the day gets away from me. Um, you gave me some great insights. You spoke a lot of truth into me and I know you did to our listeners as well. So thank you so much for being here. Gracie, I appreciate this opportunity and the, and the faith you put in me to, to reach out to through, through your podcast, to your tribe. And uh, 
if there's anything I can do for you or if your tribe reaches out, I, I just you just need to ask. That's what we're here for. I love that. Absolutely, Dan. And for the entrepreneurs out there, don't go it alone. There's people like us. And I think that's where people are listening to these podcasts. And that's one of the benefits of the last six months. People are into this more and realizing, hey, there's a tremendous amount of resources out there that, that and, and when Dan says connect, Dan means connect. And when I say connect, I mean it too. So thanks again, Dan. And to our tremendous listeners out there, thank you so much for being a part of our tremendous tribe. If you like what you heard, please hit the subscribe button wherever you're at. And if you do us the honor of a five-star review, we would be so thankful. Lastly, I'd love our listeners to get over on our tremendousleadership.com website. If you sign up for our list, we've got two free weeks of eBooks. We've got downloads of free webinars, all kinds of tremendous things. And you can uh, check out all our other backlog of um, podcasts to help make you a more tremendous leader. So to all our leaders out there, you keep on paying the price of leadership. And thank you so much for being with us today. Have a tremendous rest of the week. Thank you for listening to Tremendous Leadership with Dr. Tracy Jones. Find out more about Dr. Jones at www.tremendousleadership.com. If you've been ignited by something you heard in this episode, let us know by leaving a review for Tremendous Leadership wherever you listen to podcasts or by sending us a message through www.tremendousleadership.com.